Awaken. Hello, this is Reed Newbert, and today we're going to be talking about navigating using Google Maps. I've had people ask me, what is the best tool for using for navigation on your bicycle? And for me, it's a thing we all carry around anyway, and that's our phone. So why not use the phone and the Google Maps that we're used to using to get us to the grocery store or the gas station to get us over the mountain and into the next country and to the next hotel? So that's what I recommend, using your phone for navigation, connecting it to the front of your bicycle on the handlebars so that you can have it on and be watching it and have a spare battery so that when your battery runs out during the day, you can always plug it in and continue to use Google Maps. So we're going to talk about the process of creating great maps on Google Maps on your computer and then getting those Google Maps onto your phone so that you can use them when you actually get to where you're going to ride. So here we go. Some of this is going to be elementary and some of it will be new information to you because over the course of creating four self-guided tours through the Alps of Europe, I have learned a lot and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's go to maps.google.com forward slash maps. Once we're there, we can use this address bar to type in our destination. Let's act like we're going to Geneva, Switzerland as our starting point. So we're going to fly into Geneva. So here's Geneva. It auto finishes what I type in. Once I now see Geneva Airport, I can you can see my mouse going around in circles around it. Let's go quickly through some of these navigation tips. You can scroll out and you can scroll in. You can also grab this with your left click and you can drag it back and forth. I want to get right back to where I was, I can click in the address bar and just hit the enter key and it takes me back to where I started. So there's the runway. That's a little bit about navigation and getting to your starting point. Now, let's talk about layers. Layers are pretty cool. If I zoom out here a little bit, then I can go down here to where it says layers and I can click on satellite and it switches to satellite. And I can click back on map and it goes back to map. So that's just a toggle back and forth between satellite and map view. There are a couple other views here that I use sometimes. Um, and I'm going to click on the more button here just so you can see all the options. But I use the terrain view, which is pretty cool. Gives you just a better 3D image of the map. And I also can click on this biking image, which shows me all of the bicycling trails that are in the area. So these layers are very useful. But typically, I will check biking to see if there are biking trails in the area that I could utilize. But I will typically leave that off. And then I will turn off terrain as well. Because what I typically use is just these major satellite view. And I can see where the mountains are. And if I come over here and left click, I can see these. These are the tall mountains that are the white capped mountains. And these are the lower ones here. But if I turn on terrain, then I can see that even a little bit better. But typically I will just toggle back and forth between satellite view and the default view, which is just map view. Okay, so I'm going to turn off biking. Just going to kind of clear the map. I'm going to go up here, click in the address bar, and hit enter. And we're going to go back on the runway. I'm going to close this little view here. Now we want to go somewhere. So where do we want to go? My wife and I recently rode the route of the Grand Alps. And the starting point for that is Thonan Le Bain. So let's go to Thonan Le Bain. We are. Five and a half kilometers. It's about four miles or less. Okay. Don't, then we gotta find a place to stay. Yeah, that's We're going to click in the address bar and hit the end key, which will get us out to the end of the description of the airport. And then we're gonna type in the word two, because we're gonna go to somewhere. So two, we're gonna type in Thonan Lebane, and there we go. It auto brought that up, finished it for me, and it says, hey, let's go to Thonan Lebane. So there we go. Now, when we're looking at this, it'll typically come up with the driving directions because that's what most of us use Google Maps for is for driving. This came up with three different variations of driving and you can click on each one and it will highlight it for you. And those are the driving directions, but we're not driving. So what does Google Maps have for cycling? Well, it has transit. There you go. There's how if we want to take train and buses to Thona Lebane. Here we go if we want to walk to Thon and Lebane. And here we go, this little cycling icon that says, hey, let's cycle to Thon and Lebane. This cycling icon is very cool and can be very helpful for keeping you off of the freeways. If you're driving your car, you don't mind if you're on a freeway. If you're riding your bike, that's a problem if you're on the freeway. I almost got on the freeway or the Autobahn or something and died. 
for the most part will keep you out of busy tunnels. Not all tunnels though. If you have to go through a tunnel to get to where you're going, it'll take you through a tunnel. So you got to watch out for that. So that is adding a two. Now you can add up to 10 locations. So you can have your starting point and your end point and eight waypoints in between. Another cool thing about this bicycling icon is that if you have the car icon on here, it just gives you this, the instructions and it doesn't really tell you about the route that you're going to travel. But when you click on cycling, it actually gives you an elevation profile. So I can drag my mouse along this elevation profile. And if you look over on the map, you can see the little dot is moving along the route and it will tell me where my hills are to go up and my hills are to go down and the mountains are to climb and that kind of a thing. It also tells me my overall elevation climb on this route is going to be 162 meters and down 159 meters. So essentially flat overall, but I've still got to climb 162 meters. Well, I wonder how many feet that is. Well, let's see here. There is an options button here. So you can click on that and switch between metric and standard. You can have it be automatic. So if it's automatic and you're in Europe, it's going to be kilometers. If it's automatic and you're in the United States, it's going to be standard. So let's go with miles so that it switches to that. And now it says, oh, that's 531 feet. So if you speak the language of feet or you speak the language of metric, then you can switch back and forth using this. I like to leave it on automatic because when I'm in the United States, then it does standard when I'm planning Europe it switches to metric automatically. So I can close that. Now I have my elevation profile. I can make note of how many meters I'm going to climb in doing this route. And that's all through this cycling icon here. So in traveling from Geneva to Thon and Lebane by bicycle, you can see that it only gave me one option. There's only one route here that it says, hey, go this way. But I'm going to type in a different destination and demonstrate that it can tell you that you have a choice of going one of two different optional ways. And when you're sending this information to your cell phone, you don't want two different options. You want the option that you chose because you did all this research. So let's say that we want to go to Villanueva. So here we go. Villanueva, Switzerland. So when I type in Villanueva, Switzerland, all of a sudden, ooh, I've got two different optional ways to go here. And I can click on this one. And if I want to go this way instead of this way that it first suggested, or if I just want to be dang sure that it takes me this way, then what I want to do is I want to put in a thing called a waypoint to force the map to only have one choice and not two choices. So that when I send it to my phone, it's going to take me the way that I want to go. So let's go over here and let's add a third destination. Now remember, you can add up to 10 waypoints starting and ending plus eight in the middle. So we're going to say, hey, we want to go to Thon and Lebane first. Well, the order of this is Geneva to Villanueva to Thon and Lebane. And so now we're really kind of messed up. But we can drag this guy here so that it goes to the center. And then we're definitely guaranteed to go on the south side of Lake Geneva. And that's what you want is to be able to send this information to your phone and know that these waypoints are in here so that your trip is scheduled. Now, if I would have just selected that other map, then when I sent this to my phone, it would have taken me around the north side of the lake instead of the south side of the lake. So waypoints are very important in really solidifying the route that you want to go. Let's say now that I don't want to go to Villanueva. In fact, I'm going to delete this. See this X out here. I can delete this section remove this destination. So now I'm going to Thon and Lebane, but there's a beautiful castle out here at Yvois. So check this out. You can scroll in here and you can see, ah, oh, look at the castle here at Yvois. So I clicked on that. I didn't really want to click on that. I'm going to go back to where I was and now it's going to take me back and restore my beginning and ending point. But in the middle here, I want to go see the castle at Yvois. You could be tempted in this situation to just, if you, if you look here, I can go along my route here with my pointer and I can grab that route and I can drag it up to Yvois. And it's like, oh, voila, I'm in Yvois. Well, that's not going to work because when you send that to your phone, it's going to go right back to this and you're going to miss out on Yvois. So what you have to do is put in a waypoint for Yvois in order to solidify that you're actually going to go there. So Yvois, there we go. We're going to go there. Now that looks funny. What we do is we take this and we drag this again up into the middle. And then it says, 
you're going to go to Yvois, and then you're going to go to Thon and Levain. You can put in lots of things for addresses too. Don't give in to the temptation to just drag this somewhere and hope that that worked. When you send this to your phone, all that information goes away. And the only thing it cares about is what waypoints you had actually selected. And then it will choose your route for you. Putting in enough waypoints is critical to really defining the route that you're going to go. So another tip that goes along with this is that Included in the database for cycling routes are single track trails and dirt roads and downright things that if you're on a road bike, you definitely don't want to do. If you're on a mountain bike, you might want to do. Okay, so we just got up here and it's a dirt road. That one became a dirt road all of a sudden. So that's not going to work for us. So you kind of need to know what the road or trail surface is like in order to make a final decision on whether or not you want to go that way. The first thing that really helps with that is to switch over to satellite view. So if I go down here and click on satellite view, and then I zoom way in, then I can see the road in a lot of cases, and I can determine if there are cars on it already, if I can see lanes drawn, then I can see that it's not a dirt road. Okay, another really important tool with this though is the little man that gives you the street view. And if I look down here, then I can click on it. I'm going to drag this little man here. By the way, if you like this video, please click that you liked it and please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to create more videos like this that will be helpful for you in planning your own trips. So I would love for you to help me with the YouTube algorithm by clicking subscribe and clicking that you liked the video. It's very helpful. I would really appreciate it. You can drop this little man on any road where it's blue. So if you go there, I'm just going to drop him back here for a minute and zoom out a little bit so you can see how many roads show up. Um, there we go. Now we can see how many roads that this little man can be dropped on. So let's say um, that I want to drop him on this road. Now notice this road goes north and south. So I'm going to drop him on this road. And now let's see. You can see with this arrow down here which direction. That red points to the north. So as I scroll around here, now I'm looking at going north. And I can even travel this road. So let's see, is this a road that I want to be on? Boy, it looks like a pretty good road. I haven't seen a car yet. So depending on when they took this video, it's pretty quiet. Um, in fact, there's a great sign. Look at that, a local cyclist. Then to get out of this view, the street view, then you can click this arrow here to go back in the top left corner here where my mouse is. You can click that and now I'm back where I am. And I can see that that's not a dirt road. Sometimes when you use this cycling view, it'll take you over a mountain and there are cat tracks, there are single track roads, and you really need to be careful and zoom in and really study the maps in order to know whether or not those are dirt roads or single track trails, etc. One more thing that I didn't mention about using this cycling icon, and that is that it's not always right. We've ridden to the end of a recommended route and found that it ends in a cornfield. All right, we're going to follow the bike path laid out by Google. Hopefully it'll take us the right way. Stop. We've ridden to the end of a recommended route and found it ends in an industrial parking lot. And we have no way of knowing where to go from there. We've also done it where it takes us through a cow pasture. And there's actually a little entry point there. And there's a grassy road that goes through the cow pasture and there's a park bench set up and it really is a walking cycling path. But you can't always rely on the cycling route. You are going to find that sometimes it will run you into a dead end. Now, when you've planned your trip and you've got it on your phone and it's taken you to a dead end and you're not sure how to get around it because that's the recommended bicycle way to go, then what you can do, and these options are available on your phone as well, so you want to play with your phone navigation before you go, but you can switch over to driving navigation. And so I clicked on the car over here in the top left-hand corner. And then you can go to options and you can say, I want to do the car navigation, but I want to avoid highways and I want to avoid tolls and I want to avoid ferries. Unless you want to go on a ferry, that can be fun. And so if you do that, 
then chances are it's going it's going to recommend a little different driving route that'll get you from point A to point B as fast as it can, but it'll get you out of the spot that you're in in being in a dead end. So that's a good workaround and we used that before. One of the other cool things that you can use when you're navigating, of course you can put in your hotel address, uh, anything you want. Like here's the Carrefour Margin Cell. So I'm going to put in the Care F4 uh, margin cell and I can navigate to that. Okay, that's kind of obvious because that's what we use this for all the time. But one thing that you might not know that you can actually put in is you can put in coal names or climb names, Paso, Paso del or Col de la, those kinds of things. So let's say we want to go to the Col de la Croix. So we're going to go to the Col de la and you can see here they have all these options for Col de la Croix de Feu, Col de la Croix Olon. So let's go to the Col de la Croix Olon because I know that's in the neighborhood. I've climbed that before. Reed, where are you? Turn around and tell me. Oh, the Col de la Croix! Yay! And now we can see here's the Col de la Croix. And so that can be a waypoint for us. And then let's say that the next spot we want to go to is Stadt which is a beautiful place in Switzerland. Love to go there again. So there's Stadt, and there's a way to fix this. You need to, you'd have to force that to be, to go on the road that you want it to go on by putting in additional waypoints. So the important thing for you to know is that you can use summit names as addresses in Google Maps. That's pretty cool. So just as a side note, one of the things I do is I like to plan my trips in segments because I never know how far I'm going to go because I don't know what the weather's going to be like. And if the weather's nasty, then I'm probably not going to get very far that day. I might only go five miles or I might go no miles if it snows. So I like to use a spreadsheet tool where I just plan segments. And when we recently traveled the route of the Grand Alps, I planned everything with a base of the mountain, top of the mountain, next base of the mountain mentality. So here we go. We're going to go from Morzine and climb the Col de Juplan and end in Clues. And then we're going to climb from Clues over the Col de Rome and end in Les Repassois. And so in doing that, for each one of these segments to go from Morzine over the Col de Juplan to Clues, I will lay out exactly how many kilometers it is, which converts into miles, what the top elevation is so that I can know how many more feet I have to climb, how many more meters I have to climb, and then I will put in the total number of meters that are to be climbed on it and convert that into the number of feet that are to be climbed. That's a cool thing that I do. So if I am thinking about it and I can get over the mountain, then I'll say, all right, I can get over that mountain. Now can I do another segment today? And what will that mean? Or is it time for me really to stop because I'm going to get to Le Grand Bornand in the dark? And that really helps me to plan my trip. And I use these elevations here. Let's go back over to the map. I use these elevations here this climb here to the Col de la Croix is going to be 2,007 meter climb. Woo, that's a big climb. And I know on a bicycle, it's going to take me a fair amount of time to do that. It's 143 kilometers. And so, you know, we're talking about nearly a hundred mile day. And uh, I might not want to bite off the next segment, or I might not want to bite off that segment. If that's a segment, that's a pretty long segment. And that way I can let my days be flexible on how far I'm going to travel. And I know what I'm getting myself into when I start up the next mountain. So here's a cool trick that goes along with what I was just talking about in creating segments. I will make every tab a segment with all the waypoints that I want for that trip. So let's say that I wanted to go from Geneva to Stadt, and that is one segment. I right clicked on the tab and I'm going to hit duplicate. And now I can go here and I can say, uh, I no longer care about that. And I'm going to go like this and drag this around. And that means I'm starting from Stadt, which means I'm not going to go from Stadt to Geneva. I'm going to go from Stadt to Spitz. Let's type that in as our next destination. Here's Spitz. So now, what can I see from here? I can see that that's going to be 314 meters of climbing and then 772 meters of descending. Now I've got this segment here identified, assuming that that's the way I want to go and I don't want to correct this by adding additional waypoints. So now I have that as another segment that I can add in here to my trip plan. So now let's say that I want to go to Lauterbrunnen. And so what I would do is create a new tab. I'm going to go here and I'm going to make Spitz first place. I'm going to delete Stadt and replace it with Lauterbrunnen. And there we go. So now that's how I would get to Lauterbrunnen on my bicycle. And oh, by the way, 
I should see if I do this that there are a whole bunch of bicycle paths in the area. So there is a bicycle path all the way along this lake. And uh, you can see that it's going to take me on that bike path. Um, I guess it doesn't show up in green if, I'm, if I've selected that I'm going to go that way. But that's pretty cool. This is a great ride along the Thunersee up to Lauterbrunnen. Awesome. How? Now I've got these three segments identified. So now we have three segments of our trip identified. Three logical distances between cities that we would potentially stay in. It's best to keep these in chronological order so that you can send them to your phone in that same order ultimately. Now once you get these saved, you want to right click in the top of the bar here, the empty portion, and say bookmark all tabs. Then I can go here under my travel cycle. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, Switzerland. Because I'm in Google Maps and I'm logged into my account, it's going to save that. Let me show you something cool. I'm going to close out of Chrome. I'm going to come back into Chrome. And I'm going to go here to my travel cycle folder. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to say Switzerland. It created a new folder. I'm going to right click on the folder name and say open all three. And boom. There are my three segments. Geneva to Stadt, Stadt to Spitz, and Spitz to Lauterbrunnen. So there we go. Now we have our three segments. If you need to update any of these segments, then you'll want to save it again. And you'll notice here that I created here for the Route of the Grand Alps different version numbers. So I have 2.2, 4.1, 5.1. If I go here and open up a new instance of Chrome, then I can get the Route of the Grand Alps and I can open all 12. And these are all my segments. Very cool. Now this does require you to play with the save feature and learn a little bit about folders. You can see I didn't do that perfectly because Switzerland here has something called new folder and I can rename that folder to be um, version 1.0 and save that. And now if I go in here to travel cycle, I can go into Switzerland and this is version 1.0. Okay, so now I have my three segments that I've created here and that's pretty cool. But let's say that I want to change them or I want to add another segment or something like that. Let's say that on this last segment that I want to go to Lysigen. I want to make sure that I go through Lysigen on my way. So I want to add a destination and that's going to be Lysigen. I don't want to go from Spitz to Lauterbrunnen and back to Lysigen. So I want to slide this one in between and then that's great. Now I want to save these again. I haven't found a way to just update my saved bookmarks. What I have found is that I can save different versions of them. So if I right click up here in the top and I bookmark all tabs and I select Switzerland and I've got version 1.0, I'm going to make version 1.1 and I'm going to save them there. Boom. So now when I close this and I open up my Chrome and I go back into here to travel cycle, Switzerland, I've got 1.0 and 1.1. I can right click on that and open all three and voila, I have this one saved that shows I'm going to Lysigen. Okay, so now that I've got my segments identified and my trip all planned, might have, you know, 10 or 12 tabs along here. Now I want to get this information over to my cell phone so that it's useful to me on my trip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, send directions to your iPhone. So when I do that, it's going to give me the option to send it either to a text message to my phone or an email to my email address that's associated with my Google account. I prefer to send it to an email because then I can organize those emails in a folder and save that off to the side so that I can go into that folder in my email and pull up that segment and select that link and have that specific thing just well organized. I'll go through them in order. I'll send this first one to my email. I'll send the second one to my email. I'll send the third one to my email. And then I'll go in and I'll save each one of those things off into a trip folder. And then it's as easy as when I am in Spitz, I can go into that and I can select this Spitz to Lauterbrunnen segment and boom, I'm off and rolling. Okay, so one drawback to Google Maps is that it knows what day it is, it knows what season it is, it knows if roads are closed because of snow. And so if you're planning a trip in February, which today it's February 1st, then you won't be able to plan a segment that includes a road that's closed. 
Now you can do this, let's say we're in Chaussures, France, which is the base of the Chima de la Bonnet, and let's try to climb to the Chima de la Bonnet. Solid 14. Let's go to Chima de la Bonnet. Okay, there's the Chima de la Bonnet. And if I click on this, it says, Oh, great. I'll show you where that is, but I won't take you there from Jauziers. So what we want to do, go to the beginning of this and type in Jauzier to Chima de la Bonnet. Let's try it again. And that will give us this. Now, it's taking me all the way around the world, you can see. I don't want to ride my bicycle all the way around the world. I just want to climb up, actually, this road right here to get to the Chima de la Bonnet. So we need to do this little trick, which only allows you to do this if you only have a starting and ending start point and an end point. Once you add additional destinations, then it won't do it. So let's say that we want to depart at, and we want to choose a time when we know the road is open. Let's go to August 16th. So there we go. Now we can do the exact climb that we want and climb up to the Chima de la Bonnet. So if you're planning in the winter, you kind of have to get down to where it will let you say that you're going to leave at a different point in time and accept that as one of your segments. You have just two waypoints, a beginning and an ending point. Planning in winter is a little finicky. Now what I did was I saved all my tabs, all my segments, and I did my the best that I could to put in my starting and my ending point and let it be wild and then... What I was able to do is at the last minute, I was able to go in and fix those with additional waypoints as soon as those roads opened right before my trip and then send that information to my cell phone. So that brings up another important question, and that is, how do you know if coals are going to be open? Coals in the Alps open up anywhere from May through early July. So if we're going to plan a trip and we're going to climb over significant climbs, we're going to make sure that it's at least in about the third week of June. Then it's best to check websites and do some web searching in order to see if, when those coals are exactly scheduled to be opened because they can be open late. And if you're planning to go climb major climbs like the Col de Isaran in May, you're going to be disappointed. Okay, now switch sides. Here we go. Super. Okay. So make sure that you plan and do some research before you take off in that direction uh, early in the season and even late in the season. A lot of these climbs are open until October, but some years they're closed in September. So it just depends on snowfall. So once you have all of these segments identified and sent to your cell phone and you're ready to rock and roll, chances are you're still going to run into navigation issues. So there are lots of things that I use for navigation. Number one of the Google Maps that I've created. Number two, I take advantage of the signage. It's right there. And for things like the Route of the Grand Alps, there's fabulous signage. You can almost do the whole thing without even having your maps on. Course knowledge is critical. Zooming in and out, driving down the road, using the little man to drop to drop in on some uh, place in the Alps and, and see what it looks like on that road and then travel the road by going forward or backward down the road. Seeing what you're going to see before you get there is critical. Partner input. I've had to learn the hard way to listen to my wife because a lot of the time she's right. So use your partner input or the input of the Peloton. Friendly people. I can't tell you how many times we've just run into friendly people who are helpful and will give us directions. And as long as I know the name of the place where I want to get to, then they can point their finger, go that direction. You know, it's pretty obvious. There's also the possibility that you'll encounter strange detours and Google will want to take you places that you didn't think you needed to go. Chances are a road might be closed. I remember one time when we were riding in Austria and Google kept insisting that we had to go on this strange detour, which I did not want to do. So we got there and there was a gate, but it was open. Then we went just a little bit further and they had a landslide and the road was fairly well trashed. Also, there are a couple of websites that I want to give a shout out to just in the end here that I think are super useful if you're going to the Alps of Central Europe. One is cyclingchallenge.com. Will manages this website and creates all the material and he is amazing and he has great maps. He has all kinds of things that are useful. It's cycling-challenge.com. Another one that I recommend is climbfinder.com. They have gone through and created a database of hundreds and hundreds of climbs. So as I zoom out here and let this map draw, I can zoom in on any of these dots and each one is an identified climb. So there's the Camin des Montons. I don't even know what this is. 
But if I go here, then I can click on that and I can get a an elevation profile, usually from either side of the mountain that I want to climb up. It'll give it a rating of 118 difficulty points. It'll have an average gradient. It'll tell us the steepest segment. Ooh, this looks like a beast. This is great information. I highly recommend using climbfinder.com and it's a free to use. You just need to sign up for an account and they will allow you in to see anything you want. So that's a terrific tool to use. I hope that this tutorial has been useful for you. I'm a big fan of using Google Maps to plan my trips and I found it to be the perfect tool, found my phone to be the perfect tool to use on my handlebars. I highly recommend it. So hopefully this was helpful to you and I wish you the best and ride safely. Every time.